Saturday morning. This week in dioramas, I am your host Tech Chucker. Uh, if you aren't familiar with how this show operates, every week I go through Instagram looking for the coolest looking dioramas, and I showcase them right here on the show. Now, if you would like to be showcased in a future episode, all you need to do is upload your diorama pictures to Instagram and tag them with the hashtag This Week in Dioramas. We've got a great show lined up for you this week, uh, but before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about what's coming up in December. Uh, we've got a lot of new viewers, upwards of two or three thousand new viewers since the show started, and some of you probably jumped in during season two and you aren't familiar with what we do at the end of the season, which is the Grand Championship vote. Uh, you probably hear me say or talk about it every single week after the uh, the top five, the fan vote. Uh, and what we do, or what I do, is every week I pick my top five of the week and then you guys vote for your favorite and the winner of each of those episodes will be entered into the Grand Championship vote that is coming in December. That's the season finale of the show. Now, some things that uh, I, I kind of want to share with all of you is how I choose my top five. Uh, so I always say it is my top five, my favorite. So it is obviously opinion and it is subjective to what I like. But some of the things that I try to take into consideration is uh, number one, the skill set of the creator and uh, how unique the diorama is. So is it something that we've seen a million times or is it something that I've never seen before. So uh, those are things that I might take into consideration. I will take into consideration if this is your first diorama versus you are an old pro, you've been doing this for years. Uh, and also I try to um, keep the top five fresh, as fresh as possible so that it's not always the same people in the top five, so that it's not always the same person winning. Uh, some folks have bigger social media followings than others and so constantly putting those same folks into the top five uh, might make it such that you know we have right now we've got 34 episodes we will have 34 dioramas that have won once I reveal this week's winner and we want to have unique winners and so far I think we've done a pretty good job with that of the 34 dioramas that have won there have been 28 unique creators so I think that's pretty darn good to keep it you know mixed up a little bit so at the end of the year in December we are going to have a season finale episode where I'll reveal all of the winners so you can be reminded of you know episode one's winner all the way up to the final episode winner and then you'll get a chance to vote you'll have about a week to vote for your favorite and then we'll go ahead and reveal the winner. It's a winner take all grand championship winner. We'll get whatever prize it happens to be. Now last year it was a 3D printed uh, prize pack that was generously provided by Rhino Dioramas. I don't know what we're gonna have for a prize this year and I don't know who's gonna be providing the prize. Now I, I'm, I'm hoping to provide a 3D printed item or two from my repertoire. So if any of you are interested in kind of helping to make that prize pack kind of interesting, uh, hit me up in a DM on Instagram. That's always the best place to get a hold of me. Uh, and uh, you know, it's not it's not meant to be anything of major value. I don't want anybody putting 50, 70, 100 dollars in 
to the prize pack. That's not the intention. The intention of the show is not really the competition. The competition is just to try and make it fun. But the idea behind the show is really just to talk about and be impressed by all of your work. And so, you know, like I said, the competition is just a fun little add-on. I don't want it to be some major thousand dollar prize not even really a hundred dollar prize it, it's just something small that uh, you know can make it even more fun so be aware coming up in December is the season finale we'll have that grand championship vote so if you're still working on the diorama if you haven't gotten into the top five yet uh, don't be afraid to you know mix it up a little bit uh, another criteria that I use is how well you present the diorama uh, a good picture and a good way of presenting it can certainly uh, you know push your diorama into the top five even if your skill set maybe you're not a master builder maybe you are really good with pictures frame it up really well compose it nicely get some nice lighting and even a and i hate to say this even a low level beginner level diorama can make it into the top five so take all of that into consideration i try to be as fair as possible when it comes to the top five but again it is my opinion it's what i really like and um so you know it's subjective it doesn't mean anything about any of the dioramas other than I like it and I'm trying to uh, mix it up as much as possible and keep it fresh so be on the lookout for that coming up at the end of the year uh, but let's get this showcase on the road we do need to reveal the winner of last week's fan vote and the winner is the medieval armory dial by lupus imperator congratulations you're now entered into the grand championship vote coming at the end of the year Make sure you stay tuned till the end of this episode where you'll get your chance to vote again on your favorite of my top five, and I will reveal the winner next week. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's go ahead and get this showcase on the road. Make sure you have topped off your beverage. I've got Kirkland's Best from Costco with a hint of sugar and a little bit of 1% milk. Here we go. <laughs> that was too much. <laughs> that was too much. All right, we're going to get this showcase on the road. As always now, there are no cuts. No cuts. We are going to just go through this. We're going to jump right on in first with this one coming from Cremated Plastic. And holy crap. This thing is amazing. It is the Shady Brook Asylum. Uh, it is available, so DM them if you are interested in this. Uh, it's based on the, okay, HHN. I have no idea what that, Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood. So that must be, I don't know, something wherever you live is my guess. I don't think that's a movie. Uh, it's a haunted maze, psycho scare I can't read. I, I gotta say, wow, you did an amazing job with this piece. It looks so good. The paintwork on here is spectacular. I love the Shady Brook sign. Is that um, is that 3D printed or did you cut that out? And now the cool thing is because either way, if it's if it's 3D printed or if it is hand done, um, the cool thing is is you can do this on a flat piece and then because it's so thin, you can just kind of bend it which you've done and it gives such a great look I love that window oh everything about this thing is so cool the lighting on this picture you really did a great job on it uh, it's just amazing you've you've done an amazing job so DM them if you are interested in this piece because it is so nice look at the details the leaves that have kind of built up over years you've got some nice chains to hold the sign up which is awesome the attention to detail on here is second to none so awesome job coming up next from we're not going to say this right but let's give it a shot oxidin toys oxidant toys I don't know. It's a chemical warehouse diorama for six inch figures, so 112th scale. I really like the color scheme you've got here. The green wall looks awesome. You textured it very, very nicely. Gives it kind of a stucco slash uh, 
oh what's it called i want to say yeah plaster a plaster feel and then the bricks that you've got here uh likely to be um cinder block sort of uh, bricks looks awesome the floor looks great you did some nice weathering on there so it's not just a, uh, a gray you've got some dirt and dinge on there this is a great looking piece you painted it very nicely a uh, very nice presentation great lighting with the pictures that's uh, one of the things that I really do appreciate a lot is not only the skill set of the diorama creation but also the lighting and that's such a hard thing to do if you're not familiar with photography it is so hard to get a good picture unless you just happen to have good lighting where you are doing this and you've done a great job presenting this here's a little bit of a work in progress before all of the paint is on here this looks awesome so very well done next coming from mad pxl customs this is again another really really well done piece i it just 16 likes come on you guys get out there and like this i don't know why people haven't seen this unless you're just brand new to instagram this is a very well done piece your brickwork is spectacular i use that word spectacular a lot um I need to get my thesaurus back out and get my sheet of extra words. It's uh, you, did, you did a great job with it. I love the weathering that you've done on all of this. The mortar looks awesome. And check this out. These little bricks here are, I, I mean, this is... That, that's what makes it for me is these extra little bricks that have I, I think they in real life we see bricks like this and it's like they've lost the face of the brick a part of it has fallen off and this is exactly I mean you you nailed it it looks so good the paintwork on here is looking awesome the accessories with the the posters on there the window boarded up kind of that looks awesome uh, you've got oh look at that I didn't notice this before you've got some like power lines that were just they just drilled a hole through the brick and just were like I don't care let's just run this wire through that happens it's awesome that you included that your high voltage power box looks great everything about this looks awesome so very very well done next coming from Euler's workshop as always does amazing work and check this out I mean this you could I would have thought that this was real it is so incredible his work if you haven't already go check out his youtube channel he is still doing a giveaway kind of a giveaway challenge where if he can get up to a thousand subscribers by the end of this year he is going to make a diorama for the prize winner uh, within some parameters obviously so get go check out his channel but just check this thing out there are so many details the lighting in here is perfect the paintwork you can see there's kind of some dinge on the white walls that is awesome that's exactly what what a workshop like this is gonna look like I mean look at this you've got stainless steel water table you've got a parts cleaner right there I mean there are so many cool details about this piece it is absolutely stunning now he said that this was a slightly older piece uh, and he sold it and I think he's doing some upgrades to it now so awesome awesome job on this piece Coming up next from Badger Dio, stepping it up with an awesome Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles diorama. This is a Dockside Dio from The Secret of the Ooze. Uh, just need to have a super shredder underneath so he can break in underneath. Uh, and then obviously the other turtles so they can be doing their little, yay, we beat him, and then boom, he comes back. This is a great piece. With that super shredder coming out, we're seeing a lot of different renditions and everybody has a slightly different interpretation of this scene and I love it I absolutely love it I, I, I just really liking the weathering that you did on your sheet metal or middle the sheet metal the tin here that looks so nice and I really like the brickwork that you've got down below with the lighting on here it looks so cool there is I, I know that there's like a water effect here I can't remember if there's a closer up view of that I want to see because I'm wondering what you use for that water it looks really nice I love the ropes for the dock uh, posts or whatever those things are called you did a great job on this piece I am very very impressed 
Next, coming from Dagoba Customs, I just love this picture. Again, I love the photography stuff. I suffer from a lack of vision when it comes to posing my own figures. You've done a great job with this. It is such a great great picture i love the diorama that in the background it's just it's cool to see the um the behind the scenes look at that that is super cool so awesome job uh, as always you know share those pictures even if you're not showcasing your diorama necessarily by all means tag us tag us with the twid dio shots uh that's kind of the uh the hashtag that we use if you're not really trying to get on the show or sharing a diorama picture it's more of a picture picture an acba sort of picture but again you know if you're showcasing a diorama as well use the regular hashtag too and um, we might showcase it I'm blathering on. I apologize. Moving on to Diorama Boy. Here is a really cool kind of alleyway diorama. It is 21 and a half inches front to back, 14 inches wide, and 14 and a half inches high. In case you can't read, I'll read it for you, I guess. This thing is amazing. The paintwork, the sculpt work on here. Just look at this. This actually looks like old tar. Uh, concrete whatever it, it just it looks like a real street a real alleyway this is amazing there's so many textures and, and angles and whatnot the lighting is perfect on here as always i'm just always impressed with your work the graffiti i always talk about the graffiti and the accessories the debris that you've got it always looks so natural so amazing work as always Next up, coming from Nyack Dio. This is a picture that I found. I don't know exactly how it was I found it because it wasn't hashtagged, which is fine. Uh, but I wanted to showcase this because it was so cool. I really like this piece. It's a critter that I'm not familiar with, but I'm very impressed with this work. It looks so, so good. The paintwork on here looks awesome. I love the uniqueness. This obviously has a Japanese uh, look to it, to the you know the architecture the design uh, a little more than we see in here in the states at least in my midwest minnesota <laughs> we don't see buildings like this too often love and the lights on here or is that a uh, yeah 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 there's lights just ignore ignore the host talking nonsense but look at this picture this is so cool i really like this i love the little sign that you've got there all of the signage is absolutely spectacular looking i love being able to showcase diorama craters that i've never showcased before i try to make sure that we get some of those in whether it's tagged or not so we can get the word out even more and i'm super glad that instagram wound up showing this in my feed because this is such a great diorama piece Speaking of great diorama pieces, this is another one, a uh, diorama creator that I'm not familiar with, but I really like the work. This looks so good. The weathering on this piece, uh, this is a, it, it's just, it's awesome. I love this. There's so many different picture ideas that you could take with this because it's so long. You have a lot of uh, uh, room to work with on this and you did a great job on this piece. Uh, I hope that you get to see this video and uh, maybe you'll share some more of your work with us because you do some really, really nice work. Next up, coming from Star Marvel 76, and I gotta say, this is a spectacular piece. There it is, there's the word again, spectacular. This is a really nice looking diorama piece. It's very, very unique. It's an amazing Spider-Man number 328 dio. Uh, apparently he's been working on it for, for two years, similar to how I was working on my secret stash dial for two years. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, it's been a constant two years worth of work, uh, but this is a super cool looking diorama. Diorama. It is made to look like a comic book cover and the characters are just coming out of it and that is awesome. The action with the pieces that are blowing up off of it. So, so cool. What a great idea. This is something that anybody would love to have on their shelf because it is so well done. So amazing job. Star Marvel 76. Uh, you couldn't have done any better on this piece. 
Next, coming from Mr. C5050. It's a lot of numbers when you're saying them out loud. Uh, just finished building their newest diorama. This is a Mythic Legions dio, and I'm already very, very impressed with the detail on this. If this isn't done yet, uh, I, it, me personally, I would have been like, this is the best I could have done. I, I'm good with calling this done uh, so if you have more work on it by all means share it when it's done it is looking very very nice i love the fact that you've got this portion of the wall kind of broken off that gives it a great look uh, and i just i'm really digging on it the pieces look very nice the paintwork on the stones looks great so awesome job can't wait to see even more from you this one's coming from Dioramas Tom, and this is a amazing piece. And again, this is another one that I'm like, 14 likes, how is that possible? This is such a great looking piece. Get out there, folks. Uh, go find more creators to put into your Instagram feeds so you can start seeing more of this stuff, these, uh, these creators. Uh, it, I, I, I don't understand. Uh, this is an amazing piece. There's so much detail in here. Just look how realistic this actually looks. This is a great piece. And you've got a little light in here. I think they, yeah, it was uh, influenced by or inspired by the 1970s. 17 movie which is a very very good movie if you haven't seen it especially if you're interested in uh, filmmaking it's a really cool movie but this thing is chock full of detail it is so realistic looking again the cool little light in there to really show off the depth of this piece uh, you've done a great job with it the skill set on here is very evident I'm amazed by what you've done here so awesome job and again make sure everybody you're following the hashtag this week in dioramas on on Instagram and go out and find some diorama creators and give them like uh, give them like give them like maybe send me a book on how to how to how to speak <laughs> don't do that I don't want that book uh, this one's coming from the mat this is coming from from the mat cave it's a giant diorama uh, update finished might go back and add some graffiti and whatnot but this is a really cool diorama I saw a couple of work in progress pics and I was anticipating when this was gonna be finished loving this thing it is not just an exterior though there are interior pieces that they did on this piece it is an all-around complete diorama playset almost and it is so well done I love the paintwork that you did on here it looks like it's an old building that's been around forever it's like an apartment complex or maybe a, a uh, office building and then we can start seeing around the edges we got a little bit different brick here which is cool that's a nice uh, addition to it to kind of break up the uh, the bricks make it look a little more unique which I really like and then let's see if this post has any of the interior pictures uh, we got a little alleyway this thing is massive there is so much going on here I mean it just the amount of time and effort it took to put this together I, I gotta I gotta get in and look at the interior here's the interior this is so cool I mean there is it just keeps on going with details 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 look at the floor this is so cool so much effort put into this I absolutely appreciate that effort so much so great job on a just absolutely epic diorama all right, coming up next from the Shadow Gallery 718, this is a purgatory diorama, and I love this thing. It is so incredibly epic. I really dig it a lot. It has that wow factor when you look at it right off the bat. You're like, huh, wow. Hence the wow factor. I'm really, I'm really hitting them on all cylinders this week. This thing has so many cool details that you don't even notice at first, but it's all there. You can see it almost, I mean, it really looks like there's depth way back behind here with this kind of gradient purplish blue background that you've got. And then the flame effect. I mean, this thing is so well done. I really like these flame effects. Is that um, hot glue that you use? and um, made into like flame effect or what how did you get that I, I'm assuming you made those and then look at that you've got little arms and hands coming out from the depths of hell and that is so cool this is such a great piece you really nailed it on this one it is ah, just so impressive 
Next, coming from Jax Dio, and this is, what are we calling it? Luffy Snakeman versus Charlotte Katakuri. Not sure if I pronounced that right, but this is so unique. It, it really caught my eye the instant I saw it. I was like, wow, this is really cool. I need to know more about this thing. I, I really dig the kind of tile effect that you've got on the top of these stones. It, it to me, it, it my first thought was Alice in Wonderland. That was my first thought, but I, I'm not familiar with who these characters are. Not sure if this is like a, I'm not even gonna guess because I don't, I don't know. I'm looking in the, tags here to see if I can find it. I don't know, but I, it's so impressive and I love the uniqueness of this. It is something I've never seen before. I love how the uh, the kind of platforms have broken up. Something epic is, is happening here and yet there's still this giant fight that is happening. That's probably what has broken up the earth. There's such a story happening in here which is so, so cool and so fun and this is the kind of the uniqueness that I just I really love to see. So awesome job. Next up, coming from El Chombo NYC, go check him out. He has a YouTube channel where he showcases the making of this diorama, and uh, he always, always steps up with some unique pieces. He always seems to work with time and clocks. That's kind of his base, and that's what the base of this is. This is a clock that he gutted to use that clock base. And this is a really cool diorama, so obviously it's a Marvel Select lizard, and um, he said in his video, all of these little pillar-like pieces, those are magnetized, and because this clock was metal, that works perfectly. You can set these anywhere you want, which is so cool. That's forward thinking. That is giving whoever it is that is buying this the opportunity to set it up in whatever way that they want. So all of this is magnetized, which is super cool. It is confined in this nice little package of a deal so that you can set it up on your, your display piece or your shelf anywhere you want and it's gonna look awesome. But it's those options that he's giving you, which is so cool. So hats off to you for another really, Ugh, I can't speak. Really awesome diorama. Next, coming from Clanabel, is this Bale Bond diorama piece. Uh, it'll fit in a DT. No cuts. No cuts. Into a detolf. And I'm really digging on this piece, especially the uh, the brickwork that you've got here. The mortar looks awesome. The way that you've weathered the, di or the, uh, the bricks looks awesome really really good it breaks up this and it really is eye-catching I love the fact that the B and the O and the S are missing but you see the outline from where they used to be the window is looking very nice it's that warehouse style window with the different colors that's awesome and then you can look over here in the door the plate window is broken out which is super cool and you can see some of the glass shards on the ground again another nice touch and then there's plenty of space for you to be able to add whatever figures you want for your display you can see some of the brick from the other side it, it, it brings the context into this diorama to see some of the brick poking out underneath the stucco or the drywall or whatever this is going to be. Very, very nice looking diorama. Lots of thought put into it. So great job. Next, coming from Christoph Customs is an It Chapter 2 diorama. This is really cool. We've got Pennywise, and uh, this looks to be, uh, what's his face from Stranger Things? Uh, I forgot, I forget what his name is. Uh, the McFarlane toy. Really cool diorama. It's uh, kind of like the... Um, what is this? It probably says in here. I'm thinking of the uh, the Hall of Mirrors or something. It's been a while. I haven't. I don't even know if I've seen Chapter Two, the movie. Anyway, this is a really cool looking diorama. I love the the um, like curtain in the background. That gives it some nice texture, contrast, uh, and and depth to it. Nice lighting. I mean, this is a really cool looking diorama. And then, oop, oop, a little bit of blood splatter. Just a little bit. Just a little. Never mind the blood. I, this is so well done. The cracks on here. It looks like you've got different options for uh, window pieces that you can put in there, depending on how how you would like to display it, which is really cool. And then look at the side here. 
that is super cool. You've got the actual poster. This is just a great piece. And within that same, uh, what are we calling it? Title or whatever from Cult Creations, another, uh, well, we've got another it Pennywise sort of you know, character in here, but it doesn't have to be. This is a movie theater entrance. Very, very nice looking diorama. I love the way that these lights look. Those are very much, you know, the, the old school movie theater lights, which is super fun. I'm glad that you were able to either find or make these. Uh, not sure where this came from, but it's really cool looking. And look at these doors. That is so cool. If you remember, I don't know uh, what your movie theaters were like growing up. Our movie theater to me felt like such a grand place. And now if I were to go there, it's probably just a small, stupid, dinky little place. But as a kid, it seemed so epic and so luxurious. Uh, and it's, it's probably just because everything was red and you don't see red stuff anywhere. But this is really cool. I love the paint paintings on the side here with the frames. They're very elegant looking. Uh, it's just a great looking diorama, so kudos to you. Did I really just say kudos to you? <laughs> okay. Uh, next up, coming from Saint Seiya Squad, this is a um, Poseidon diorama. It's so epic. Uh, this is just a great diorama. There's so many cool details on here. The paintwork is awesome. I love this color. It's kind of like a tealish color that really obviously is to make it look like it's water, which is super cool. So great job on yet again another amazing diorama. Next, coming from Vasco Toys is a dojo commission. Now they had made another dojo before and this one is a little bit different, you can see. Uh, and I think that you have very much improved upon your dojo design and I am really digging on it. I liked both of them. Uh, this one is very, very clean. Uh, some nice space to be able to do different posing and whatnot. I uh, love the timbers that you've got here and then a slightly different wood color down below here. The mats look awesome. Awesome. Uh, and then the windows also with the kind of uh, shaded, is it shaded? I, I don't, I'm not getting the word right, but um, it looks awesome. And, and you know what? There's something I want to touch on. And I touch on this from time to time is your edges, they are finished. That is something I very much appreciate when you guys finish off all of the edges. Everything that is going to be visible should be finished uh, so that we're not seeing the. Um, the foam at all because uh, when you once you see the foam it ruins the illusion and that's kind of what we're doing is we're creating an illusion of a life-size piece in 1 12th scale so awesome job on this piece Coming up next from the Beyond 1138 is a Doctor Who diorama. Now, I know nothing about Doctor Who, but I did know as soon as I saw this, I was like, I'm pretty sure this is Doctor Who. And sure enough, it is. And what are we calling it? London Ruins, London in Ruins after the Dalek invasion. Or is it Dalek? Dalek. Dalek. I don't know. I have never watched the show. But I really like all of the different. Uh, materials that you've used or made it appear as though you've used. We've got brick here, we've got cinder block here, we've got like a window there, we've got concrete, uh, probably a poured concrete sort of wall there. We've got a broken down piece here. This is super cool. I have no idea what the heck these things are. Are they robots? I don't know, but it looks really cool. Not sure what scale this is, if it's 1 12th or if this is 3 and 3 quarter, 1 18th. I'm not sure. I don't know. But it's very well done. The paintwork on here, look at the weathering. It looks so nice. So great job. Next, coming from Iron Toys. This is not English. Here we go. Nope, still not English. Well, it's one tenth scale. Uh, okay, so I know what this says. It is one tenth scale, ideal for action figures of 17 to 20 centimeters. I'm amazing or I'm terrible and I didn't get it even remotely close. Here's what I really like about this piece. I love the blue color of the bricks. That is super cool. It really stands out, uh, especially against uh, what we usually see for bricks, which is not this color. And I really like this color. The window looks awesome. Everything about this is very, very well done. You did a great job on it. So very, very nice. Next, coming from Ranaquilla's Hobby. Ranaquid, 
Not sure. Uh, primer, diorama, oh man, another one I can't read because my computer doesn't translate it for me automatically. But this is really cool diorama, and I especially like this picture that you printed off with the trees in the background with kind of an infinity continuation where it's blown out the light so you don't know what's back there, but it really fits in this very nicely, and this picture is very, very cool with the lighting. You can see kind of the hard light shadow that's made right here kind of gives you the impression that we are we're, we're maybe cornered or something and I like that I like it a lot but look at all this this is super cool the, the sculpt work on all of these uh, brick like stones is very well done none of them are the same which gives it that the impression of this being a very very old building which is super cool and then look at that this cobblestone, that is a lot of design work that you put into that. You can see it's kind of like a circular uh, design, which is so cool. You did a great job on this piece, the wrought iron uh, uh, gate here. That is nice. You can see some nice weathering on there. Very, very nicely done. So great job on a really cool diorama. Next, coming from Night of the Living Toys, I really like this. It's a 112th scale diorama, uh, Nostromo C deck. I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, deck corridor, and the cool thing that they said about this is, is it is it is multiple pieces, and you can kind of assemble it into different uh, setups, which is super cool. That is something I really always like: is giving the um, diorama and whoever it is that's going to be displaying it some options as to how they can set it up, which is super fun. You can see here, there's a lot of good detail on here. I like all these wires and whatnot. That is fun, but look at this. See, each of these pieces comes apart, and are they gonna show a different setup? I'm not sure if we're seeing a different setup. But they said that you can. Can be assembled either as a corner piece or as a larger corridor. Okay, okay, yep, very cool. I'm really impressed with this piece. Next, coming from Mega Music, let's go ahead and play the video. Lots of great paint and textures and whatnot on this. There's so many different angles. I love the graffiti that you've got, especially on this door. That door looks beat up. It has been around for a while, and this is a rough neighborhood. Uh, let's go ahead and go through some of these other pictures. Look at that cool little explosion effect. That's nice. But look at all the details here. You got bullet holes, pockmarking, all this. And then, ah, there's so many cool details. Details, details, details. That is the theme. That's the theme every week. You guys are amazing when it comes to all the details that you add into these things. But look at this. Just this alone, this little corner here, spectacular. There's that word again. He uses it so much. Ah, uh, well done. Oh, look at that light. I didn't, I gotta, I gotta point that out. The little green, that adds so much. Just that little accent light there adds so much to this picture. You don't even know. Maybe you do. You do know. That's why you added it. <laughs> anyway, amazing job. Coming up next from One Man's Toydom is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sewer dio. They're calling it Toxic Waste Barrel. This is very nicely done. This water looks disgusting, and that is a good thing. Look at that. That is so gross. There's just, ugh. look how goopy that is. <laughs> I don't want to be down there. Not at all. There's a lot of great details on here. I'm guessing this that's that really weird thick like um, cardboard isn't it that you get when you maybe you get like a big appliance or something and they they put this in there to try and I think that's what that is let us know in the, in the comments if that's what you used because that is a great texture if that's what you used very nice the paintwork on here looking very good so great job very unique with using something like that i am impressed and if i'm wrong let me know what it is because that's my first thought as to what that might be and then last but not least coming from kraken's customs is this castle candor commission uh from army of darkness it is complete uh, so it's a commission so customer faux show toys and this thing is really cool looking there is a lot of opportunity for different cool pictures and uh, different setups and whatnot lots of areas that you can throw in some accessories to add to whatever you know pictures you're going to be taking let's go ahead and go through some more of these uh pictures because i want to just see this look at that that is very very cool love this little uh 
like wrought iron sort of gate looking very very nice and let's go back here the floor that looks cool awesome job and here's a little work in progress very very nicely done so uh, awesome job awesome job to everybody who participated it's so much fun to be able to look at all of your dioramas week in and week out uh, and you guys always overwhelm me with so many dioramas I can never show them all uh, and I try to get a good uh, snippet of what was submitted each week so thank you so much we are again at the end of another awesome set of dioramas, but we aren't done yet. We need to reveal my top five, and you'll get your chance to vote for your favorite on the community tab on my channel. And my top five are The Apartment Complex Dio by From the Mat Cave, The Shady Brook Asylum by Cremated Plastic, The Auto Garage Dio by Euler's Workshop, The TMNT Dockside Dio by Badger Dio, and the Luffy Snakeman vs. Charlotte Katakur Dio by Jax Dio. Again, make sure you go to the community tab on my channel after you're done watching the episode and vote for your favorite, and I will reveal the winner next week. Alrighty, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit that like button, hit the bell notification, and the subscribe button. And you know what? Share this video out with as many diorama creators and diorama enthusiasts that you can, especially those dio creators. Uh, those that aren't using the hashtag yet, let them know about it so we can get even more new creators on the show. Uh, and uh, have a great weekend. I will see you in the next episode.